So I think about it like that acetate is going to, oh, it won't be that much. It will deprotonate some amount of water. Right. But it won't do, will it deprotonate, will each of those deprotonate in water, causing there to be that many OHs, or do I have to relate it to the KAA? Yeah, well, is this weak or strong? It's weak. It's weak. So we again have to set up a start change end table. Now we have a problem because what's the equilibrium constant for this reaction? I need the KB. Yeah, you need the KB. Well, if you know the KA, how do you find the KB? Subtract from the tenths and then it Not subtract. Um, if you, that's how you would find the pKa. You would find the, the, the uh, so what we know is that the KA times the KB is 10 to the negative 14. So KB times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 equals 10 to the negative 14. We would be working with addition and subtraction if we were working with the pKa and the pKb, but here we're working with multiplication and division. Well, we know we're not expected to do heavy calculations on the test, so I'm going to change 1.8 into 2. Ten to the negative. Okay, well, that's a good review right there. It would be expected to know how to find the k from the kb or vice versa. So we do that as a division. So we end up with five times ten to the negative ten. Okay. So then over here we would end up with standard equilibrium expression with the products on the top and the starting material on the bottom. And we know from our start change end table that we're going to have concentrations of x and x yeah. of our products. And what's the concentration on the bottom? Well, we'll use our standard approximation. To make this simpler, we'll just call it 3 times 10 to the negative 2 because we know we're not expected to use quadratic formula. And we already figured out our KB, 5 times 10 to the negative 10. So you do, so once I find the X, then I have to take the P over the red. So let's see, when uh, you got that x squared here was equal to what? Um, 15 times 10 to the negative 8. Now we would cross multiply here, right? Oh, I have a yeah, yeah. Negative 10 plus negative 2 is negative 12? Yeah. I think that's right. Am I getting confused? No, I think that's right. Oh, that was wrong. Something around like three point something times ten to the negative six.
So we could approximate square root of 15 is about 4, pretty close to 16. Uh, but uh, so x is going to be less than this because uh, this is close enough, actually. We don't need to. x is about 4 times 10 to the negative 6. We know it doesn't really matter what this number is over here as long as it's between 1 and 10. So it's between 6 and 5. Who is between 6 and 5? Right. If it was just 10 to the negative 6, the POH would be equal to 6, but this is more basic than that. So more basic would be smaller. So the POH is between 5 and 6. Good. So then the pH is between 9 and 8 plus 6 is 14, and 9 plus 5 is 14. So that's the equivalence point. So that's why the equivalence point is basic. That's right. That's a very important point on the test. That's something you should just have memorized. So what can you tell me about the pH at the equivalence point for the titration of a strong acid and a strong base? So. That's right. And what can you tell me about the pH at the equivalence point for the titration of a weak acid with a strong base? It's going to be basic. That's something you probably just memorized before. But now we can see why that is. At first you might think, see, since I've added as much acid in ba as base, why shouldn't we just be neutral? Well, it's true we've added as much acid in base, but that turns all of our acid into its weak conjugate base. And then that weak conjugate base makes the solution somewhat basic. This wouldn't have happened if we were just dealing with strong acids and strong bases, because strong acids and strong bases have conjugates that are unreactive. Strong acids and strong bases have conjugates that are unreactive. We don't need to worry about what happens to the sodium after it dissociates from the hydroxide. But we do need to worry about what happens to the acetate after it dissociates from the acetic acid because this is a weak acid. So strong, strong acid, weak base is going to be acidic. That's right. For the same reason, the equivalence point for the titration uh, between strong acid and weak base would be acidic. And now we can see why that is. Be, uh, it would be similar reasoning to what we have here. It's pretty easy to remember that. As just, as just like a mnemonic, you might say to yourself, well, we're reacting equal amounts of acid and base, but the base is strong and the acid is weak. So it's kind of intuitive to think you're going to end up with something basic. But now we've actually got the reasoning, and now we can actually calculate what the pH would be at that point. Uh, this is maybe getting a little bit um, towards the upper end of how, many how much calculations you would have to do. I don't think any of the individual calculations here we did were too hard. But putting all these things together in one problem could easily suck up a lot of time. Maybe on the real test, they would have just said, told you the KB. If they just told you the KB, then it would be much more reasonable. If they just told you the KB, there really wasn't much other calculations that we did here. But it was still good review for us to remember how to find the KB from the KA. So our answer was between 8 and 9. or something, so now we'd be here. Notice that the equivalence point is still the steepest region on the graph. And of course, this point should be twice as far along the horizontal axis as this point, because this was our half equivalence point. So I don't know whether it's, I just made up this number 8.3, but we know it's between 8 and 9. And the next one I do, I'll have some base left over. That's right. So there's one more case for us to cover. But you can see, again, the frustrating thing, every new case is a different approach. So what was different about um, this approach? We didn't need the henderson hasselbach equation here. Why didn't we use the henderson hasselbach equation here? Because after we acted with base, we had the, the weak base but no weak acid. That's why we didn't need henderson hasselbach because um, after the first step, we had only weak base and no weak acid. The only time we need henderson hasselbach is when we have both the weak base and the weak acid at the same time. When we were at the half equivalence point, we only put in enough base to use up half of the original acid. So then we had both the weak base and the weak acid, and then we needed the henderson hasselbach equation. But now we've totally used up the original weak acid, so now we just react the weak base with water, the kind of standard reaction. 